Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I'm Deb Shell, your host here, and I've interviewed over 100 community leaders, business owners, and facilitators who give you the backstage pass to their community strategy. I'm a creator turned community builder, and after failing my launch in 2020, I discovered I had a passion for community events, cultivating belonging, and developing a strategy for success. As the author of Creator to Community Builder, Find Calm While Building Your Online Community, I encourage you to dig deep and go beyond the surface level marketing and understand your ideal member. As a community and marketing strategist, I've helped over 70 business owners in developing and implementing a launch plan for an online community course or membership. On this podcast, I share interviews with community builders just like you who have a message, a purpose, and who want to bring a group of humans together for a purpose. You are invited to join Community Builders with Purpose to connect with like-minded people who want to learn how to run, manage, and grow a online community. The community is free, so I hope you can join. Uh, it's a new place to share your community concept, ask questions about community building, and connect with us for an intentional community development strategy. Our members join programs and special events to continue learning and growing. The community is an ecosystem, a place where you can join no matter what stage you're in, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. I hope to see you inside. Now let's get started. Hi there, this is Deb. I am just jumping in right before this episode to give you a kind of quick uh, recap of what you're going to listen to in a second here. So there's two parts to this uh, event uh, that we recorded in earlier in the new year in February uh, as part of an event for the Community Builders with Purpose. And uh, Wendy Lawson uh, presented a uh, talk around ideas and how to, how to thrive with too many ideas. And so I thought because my clients struggle, a lot of the clients I work with struggle with this idea of what do I do? Like, is a course the right thing here? Is it, should I do a mastermind or should I do a six month program? Should I try, you know, doing it for free or should I charge for it? Like all of these questions are different ideas that we just can't figure out what's the right idea. So uh, her talk really helps, I think, just put a different perspective on ideas and saying, it's not the idea's fault. We just need to figure out like, how to make it get the right idea that's going to solve the right problem. And she makes a a really fun conversation here um, during this call. And so what's going to happen is I split this call up into two uh, episodes for the podcast. So you're going to hear part one and then you're going to hear part two. Uh, Obviously, part one is the first half of the conversation. And then the second half is part two. So if you're listening to part two right now, you'll want to jump back and listen to part one. And of course, if you're listening to this and it's part one, you'll get to um, the next episode, uh, part two, uh, when the podcast releases. I was going to do a weekly podcast, but I have decided again to make my life easier. And so I'm going to do a podcast every two weeks. So uh, that's my plan for the rest of the season. So hopefully uh, you will get to hang on until the then two weeks later to hear the uh, the end of this one. Uh, but she she just has your great tips around how do I take an idea? How do I make it practical? How do I how do I figure this out? Uh, so this is you're going to listen right now to thriving with too many ideas with Wendy It was recorded in February for the community builders with purpose community. If you're not a member, please join. It's free. You can grab a link to join. There's a button on the website on findcalmhere.com and please join us and uh, see you later. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. My name's Deb and I am the host here. I'm excited today because we have a really special guest for our beginning of season three of the Community Strategy Podcast. So if you didn't know, uh, I have struggled with so many ideas over (laughs) the years and what idea works best and starting with so many options, it might take time for you to make decisions and extending your launch time. And it may even cause you to wait to launch or even launch at all. This is precisely why I was thinking about for many of my clients who have told me about all of their ideas 
and they want to uh, have my help to set their systems and processes and programs up for them or with them. But we get caught in the work when we realize it's just too much. So I've been looking for ways to support my clients and encourage them to move forward by focusing on a few or better yet, <laughs> one option at a time. Um, I was looking for speakers to join the community uh, when Wendy Lawson shared her talk about thriving with TMI, and in this case, it means too many ideas. It, it's going to be a great conversation for us to share, and she's here with us today live since 2017. Wendy has been, a, been on a journey to help female micro business owners in the startup phase or those who are recently turned a part-time side hustle into a full-time gig. You're in the right place if you're tired of chasing the shiny objects that the gurus told you are the holy grail of success. Wendy says working hard doesn't guarantee success. A guaranteed way to burn out and quit, quit is to work hard on the wrong things. The keys to success is not only generating these ideas, but also managing them effectively. So we're going to talk about the link between inspiration and procrastination, differentiating between good ideas and an opportunity, managing ideas without overwhelm, and much more. Uh, in this session, you'll equip yourself with knowledge and tools needed to thrive in a world of too many ideas, turning your creativity into your productivity. Regarding business chaos, Wendy's been there, done that, and got the graphic tee. A former entertaining marketing executive turned business coach, Wendy traded her backstage pass for graphic tees and now helps solo entrepreneurs eliminate the chaos that keeps them tripping them up for the path of success. Since perfection is subjective, it's not worth banging your head against the wall to achieve it. Welcome, Wendy, to the Community Strategy Podcast and live with us in the Community Builders with Purpose space. Thank you, Deb. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Um, and yeah, all of that is me. All of that and a bag of chips. Uh, I got big hair and big ideas about big ideas. So uh, I'm so excited to join you guys today and talk about this. The first thing I'm going to ask is where you get your ideas. If you are, for my friends who are here live, if you'll just pop that in the chat, I want to know like, where do you seem to get your best ideas? Or where are you when ideas just sort of chase you down? Because I have a theory. I have a theory and I want to see if my theory is correct today. So share in the chat if you would, please. Um, but what I really want to talk about today is, you know, how we can thrive with TMIs, with too many ideas. And I will tell you, Deb, Deb shared with you that I serve um, primarily female solopreneurs. So I work with women who are doing their business on their own, by themselves, doing their own thing. And in that space, okay, it almost feels like ideas and getting ideas gets a really bad rap. Now, I don't think that logically, right, any of us are like, oh, ideas are the worst. We don't want them. But we say things like we're chasing uh, chasing squirrels, okay, or shiny object syndrome, where we're constantly, um, you know, bouncing from thing to thing to thing. We have language around that sort of brings this idea that all the, that brings the idea, mm, this concept that ideas are the problem, okay? Right? That's what each squirrel is. It's an idea. That's what the shiny object is. It's an idea. And we're constantly in this sort of ping pong, ping, not ping pong, pinball, ping, 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 pinball game where we're the ball going from like this idea, that idea, this idea. It's not the ideas. The idea itself is not the challenge or the obstacle. It's what we do with the idea, how we feed the idea, how we nurture the idea, and what we do to bring the idea to life that becomes the challenge for us. So that's what we really want to talk about today because, y'all, ideas are powerful, right? Ideas are what 
push us forward. Ideas are if if you're in business, right? An idea, it's the lifeblood of innovation, which is why we're in business, right? Uh, we're in business to help people to provide solutions to their own problems. And all of that starts with an idea. It starts with a nugget, with this little uh, moment of inspiration, and so we want to we want to use those to our benefit and not to our detriment. And so that's really what we're going to kind of dig into today is okay, how can I love and honor and respect and be grateful for all these ideas but not chase squirrels. That's where we're going, okay? Uh, and the first thing that we really need to understand is we can't take action on everything as Deb was saying earlier, right? One thing at a time, one idea at a time, one nugget at a time. Um, and we're going to talk about specifically three things today that comes to all of these ideas. So the first thing we really want to make sure we're all on the same page about and really understand is our brain, okay? We are now going into the science portion. I'm just kidding. We're not going into the science portion, but your brain is has a big uh impact on how you have your relationship with ideas and what you do with them. So here's the thing that you need to know about your brain. You may already know this. Um, I'm just going to reiterate it if you already know it. Okay. Your brain is awesome. Okay. Your brain's job is to keep you alive and your brain is anti-fragile or if you're extra fancy, anti-fragile. Okay. We all know what fragile is, right? I've got some gorgeous uh, um, uh, china from my nan, my British grandmother. Okay, it is fragile. It is fragile. If you breathe on it in the like wrong way, it's gone forever. Your brain, the exact opposite of that. Your brain is anti-fragile. Your brain becomes more robust bigger, stronger, faster, like they'd say in the 80s car commercials, okay, when it's experiencing stressors, uncertainty, and risk. Your brain loves to solve problems, and those problems make your brain better and stronger and faster, okay? Now, we don't want to be stressed out all the dang time, do we? Like, nobody wants that. But the truth is, that's how we grow, right? That's how we grow. Think about your own experiences. Think about your own, you know, your past. You didn't grow. I mean, I don't know you, but you didn't grow from the easy times. You didn't grow when everything was just like falling in your lap, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? You grew from the hard times. We have to have those struggles for our brain to do what it's meant to do. Now, I don't know if anyone here has ever seen if you if anyone was a fan of The Good Place. It was a sitcom on NBC. Um, I don't know, back in like the 2016, 17, 18, somewhere in there. Pre-time, right? Pre-time. The Good Place. Okay, we have some fans here. So the, if you have never seen the show, the premise is four people die and it's where they go in the afterlife. And you either go to the good place or you go to the bad place. They're actually in, well, I don't want to give a spoiler alert, but for the for the purpose of our convert, I'm just going to pause right there. I'm not going to say anything more about that. But I will say at the very, uh, in, se episode, in season four, okay, the main characters all end up in the good place. Maybe I'm, they had been somewhere else before. If you've not seen the show, I don't want to ruin anything, but they actually end up in the good place. And when they get there, everyone is miserable and they're just floating around because all of their needs are met. Like Lisa Kudrow is just sitting, she's like, the best thing about this place is a milkshake. That's all I can remember because I've been here for eternity right? Infinity and beyond. And like everything that I need, all my problems are met. There's nothing to think about. There's nothing to do. It's all already done. So they were miserable, right? That's your brain. Your brain wants those struggles and those problems to solve so that it can get stronger and that it doesn't become Lisa Kudrow obsessed with a milkshake. If you've never seen the show, this makes literally no sense. You're going to go watch the show and then I will make perfect sense to you, okay? 
So we don't want to be stressed out all the time, but our brain needs problems to solve. So what happens when you don't have any problems? Your brain starts seeking out problems because that's still its purpose, right? That's still its purpose. The purpose of your brain is to keep you alive and to solve problems, okay? So have you ever been, and I don't know if you guys posted this in the comments, um, for me, I always get my best ideas when I'm washing dishes, when I'm um, anything related to water, but not related to whatever my problem is, right? Because my brain is going in the background. I'm washing dishes. I'm not thinking about a problem. I'm not thinking about anything. But all of a sudden, Eureka, there's the solution. There's an idea. There's a nugget that I can chase down to solve this problem. Because your brain is always trying to solve problems, right? That's what it does. Now, sometimes we have, right, 2 a.m. talking people that are not related. Absolutely. When you're not thinking about your problems, your brain still is, okay? I um, I had coffee. I met up with a friend from college not too long ago. Um, and we were talking about, you know, what, what you do. We're like reminiscing from the past. And we were talking about uh, someone who was, a sorority sister of ours. And then we were trying to come up with um, her roommate. What was her roommate's name in college, right? I've been out of college for, well, it's been a few years, okay? It's been quite a few years. It's been a minute. Um, So a long time ago, and we're having this conversation and neither one of us can remember the girl that we're talking about, her roommate. Now, is her roommate, does it have anything to do with the story? Does it have anything to do with anything about anything? It has literally nothing to do about anything. I could have gone about my life and never remembered the lady's shower. But you have to know that two days later, washing my hair, and I was like, Sarah Hensley. There it is, right? My brain was still trying to solve that riddle. My brain was still engaged in a problem that it hadn't solved. Y'all, this is where ideas come from, right? Because your brain always in the background, your anti-fragile, anti-fragile brain, always in the background trying to solve problems, maybe that aren't even real problems, but it's a problem to your brain because it's, it's, you know, it's an uh, incomplete uh, something. Right? I can't even say it's an incomplete sentence. I don't even know why why it mattered what the roommate's name was. That doesn't, I don't remember. But I remember, I couldn't remember her name. And then suddenly my brain was like, here you go. So your brain is constantly trying to solve these problems. That's where these ideas are coming from, are coming from your brain to support you, to make your life a little bit easier, to solve these problems that maybe you don't even really know you have. But here's the challenge. Here's where... The first thing we really need to pay attention to with our ideas is ideas are created in a vacuum, okay? They are created in Barbie lands with Barbie, uh, stereotypical Barbie, and President Barbie, and airplane pilot Barbie, and Ken, of course, and Ken, and, you know, Alan over there, right? They're, they're created in this best case scenario lands where there are no constraints like time, like budget, like outcome, like physics, the laws of physics, right? Ideas are just kernels. They're like a, they're little nuggets of wisdom just dropped on you that have are not, there's no rules or regulations or anything around them. It's just an idea plopped into your lap. Hello, here you go. Okay. It's all about creative problem solving. That's where these ideas are coming from. Um, so, you have this idea that has no constraints. It's in, uh, it's in, it comes to you in Barbie land, right? We have to say, okay, what do I do with this? How do I manage this? Because I get millions of these, right? Millions of these popping in that are just, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's a great opportunity, or maybe it's just the name of the person that I, college from college, her roommate, right? We have to have a, we have to have a way of looking at these, organizing these catalog, cataloging these, and then acting on these. So uh, now that we know where our inspiration comes from and why our brain keeps dropping these nuggets on us, let's really start thinking about how can we best utilize these and what do we do with them? Now, I don't know if 
uh, this happens to anyone else, okay? Or if it's just me, maybe I'm completely special. It's entirely possible. But uh, I am always blinded, blinded, I say, by the most amazing ideas anytime I sit down to do any sort of book- bookkeeping, bill paying, any sort of financial anything that is guaranteed to bring me the best blog idea in the history of blogs, okay? The best new product opportunity in the history of products will come to me when I sit down and do something that I don't wanna. Scientific term, I don't wanna, right? I know I'm not the only one. You guys also go through that too, right? The minute you sit down and there is a task that you don't enjoy, that you don't want to do, that makes you uncomfortable. Remember, boredom is uncomfortable, okay? So the minute that we start doing something that we don't enjoy, that is boring, or or how about this one, that could be something that takes your business to the next level or something that would cause you to grow, right? Because now the discomfort is not related to boredom, but the discomfort is related to, remember, brain, solve problems, keep us alive, okay? When we start stretching and getting outside of our comfort zone, our brain does not like that, because we could get hurt, right? Our brain wants to keep us safe. So it's like, no, 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 no. That thought, going down that path, that is dangerous. Danger, danger. Let's over here. Let's do something that we already know how to do, um, but let's put a ribbon on it this time, right? That's the big flash of inspiration. So when we have these moments that come up for me, it's anytime I'm doing finance, anything related to like finances, money, you know, like right now getting all the paperwork together for the accountant, right? Guaranteed to bring me some brilliant ideas around something that could help someone else, right? Avoid this thing. When we have those ideas, when we have that those nuggets of inspiration, flashes of inspiration that come to us when we're doing something else that we don't particularly enjoy, we want to be super duper skeptical of that idea we want to treat that like it's a nigerian prince with a million dollars okay just for you but you have to send them your account number first like we want to come at that idea with total speculation that maybe you are inspiration maybe no i'm sorry maybe your procrastination masquerading is inspiration now if it really is a million dollar idea and not a million dollar nigerian prince okay if it really is a million dollar idea you don't have to take action on it right now i'm gonna say that one more time for the people in the back okay you can have a great idea that does not mean you have to take action on it you can write it down Wendy, I'm gonna say this to myself, Wendy, if you're sitting here getting all your financial paperwork together to send to the CPA, you can write down that idea and act on it later. It does not have to be done right now. It's gonna feel like it has to be done right now, right? Because we wanna stop doing this thing we don't like doing, okay? But often, often that inspiration that shows up when you're trying to do something else I'm not talking about solving a problem while you're washing dishes. I'm talking about brilliant new idea while you're filing your taxes or preparing the paperwork for your taxes or getting ready to, you know, preparing a presentation that you've never done before and you're really nervous about. And then all of a sudden, oh, maybe I should go check out this other thing. No, 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 no. That is inspiration. That is procrastination masquerading as inspiration. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Community Strategy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're following or subscribed wherever you listen. This helps me because I know you won't miss an episode and it helps you because you will always get the episodes right away. 
This podcast is produced by myself, Deb Shell, independent owner of Find Calm Here. If you really enjoy this episode, I am looking for some Apple podcast reviews. Um, I'm going to explain to you how to do that right now. First, if you go to your Apple podcast and click on the circle with the three dots on the top right corner, then make sure you're following the show. Second, uh, next click go to show and scroll down to where it says ratings and reviews. Then right above about, you will see a little square with a pencil. Next to the square, you'll see write a review. Make sure you save the review before closing out your screen. I would love if you could do that for me. If you don't want to say anything nice, then don't say, don't leave a review. <laughs> uh, I hope that you enjoy this podcast. Find calm until the next time. Take care. Bye.